good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Shemith Eliminator Story. This morning, I am joined by the wonderful Susie Nelson, who I'm going to say to you has absolutely persevered. She's been tenacious this morning and making sure that she could actually get on the show. Technology gods were not our friend this morning, but boy, oh boy, she didn't let that stop her. She just kept going, trying to figure out how could she be on the show to make sure that she could actually share her story with you. And boy, considering that I've just had a really, um, I suppose, a deep conversation with her about some of the things that she's that she's done in her lifetime, and one area in particular, I am so, so pleased that she did persevere this morning and that she's here to tell her story. So Susie is uh, is she's based in Denver, Colorado, and over the last sort of twenty odd years, she's done a lot of work of volunteering, spending her time giving back to people in her local community. And there's a number of things that she was rattling off to me that she has done, um, that have been significant events in her life where she's had to overcome some sort of adversity, or she has seen what. Um, you know, some some significant changes that she's gone through when she's been volunteering at various different places that has really changed her outlook on life. So I want to say a huge big welcome to Susie. Thank you so much for being here. And I can't wait to hear, you know, more about that story you were telling me in terms of you volunteering and some of the things that you've seen and how that actually has impacted your life and how you go about living your life these days as a result of that. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. I love what you're doing. I love the book. I love the message. Um, I believe sharing is caring. And whenever we can take our eyes off ourselves and help somebody else, it's always a good day, right? Absolutely. So what you were talking about earlier is um, I have been uh, in travel for over 25 years. Uh, I take men and women around the world on incentive travel trips. But my mom and grandmother were always, they actually, as a profession, did hospice. And um, so I always thought, oh, my gosh, why would you do that? Why would you spend time with people like that? But um, when my husband left me and I had to raise my boys, I took them around the world. But at the end of the day, we're here and we need to take care of business. And they were starting to get older and living their life. And I'm like. Okay, well, what do I do? Well, my Aunt Dolly, man, she was, oh, she was a hard cookie. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. She's like, well, you got to take your eyes off yourself and go help. You've got to volunteer at hospice. I'm like, I'm not going to volunteer at hospice. I said, A, I don't even know what it is, but I know grandma and mom did it. And it was like people who are dying and who wants to do that? And... But my husband left me, the kids were getting older, and something in my heart, don't you know when it's time that you hear a message long enough that you better do it? It's kind of like Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 3.17 in the Bible. God has a plan for us that it's his timing, not my timing. And uh, that just lit on my heart. And I think it was about a month that I tried to dispel it and make it go away, but I didn't. So it just happened that, you know, I was still doing all the travel, but I got to know the people and I was able to um, really understand that everybody outside of hospice says, what do you do like for work, right? Mm -hmm. But inside hospice, they wanna tell you about the people they love, the places they've been and their regrets in that order. So I uh, lost a fiance in the same hospice that I volunteer at. I was so incredibly sad. I laid on my floor and cried and thought, wow, this is like living. This isn't living. I had been around the world. My largest group is 19,700 people, 12,500 people. I can get a group done, but you can't get your life done. It yeah. just doesn't happen. You have to create whatever you're going to have. The bottom line is at the end of the day, when you're talking, you can make a decision that you're going to, if you're tired and you're working and you're like, you know what, I'm going to be in hospice one day. and I'll have plenty of time to do that. I better get on this and do it. So the Lord gave me a project 
we had gone through Columbine, Columbine shootings. That was the first mm -hmm. major shooting. And I had my boys in private Christian school. I picked them up uh, and we went down to the store. I filled three baskets full of food. They knew exactly what I was doing. They said, go ahead, take it. They put it in the bags and we took it over to the first responders. And my boys and I made uh, sandwiches for the families. And then there, mm -hmm. there's that, I mean, there's always these moments, defining moments. Another defining moment was the last bus that comes in and you know the family, they're either gonna see their children or they're not. And I still get the chills to even say that because it is very sad when you see someone realize they will never see their child again. Uh, it was, I, I don't know, even know how to put that into words other than it's horrible. It's a yeah. horrible feeling to see them. And I mean, I still have the front cover of the newspaper from that day. Turns out that I'm an event planner, as I just said. So the next year I was doing a event in Seattle. And so when I get my people settled, I go out and I look at the venue and I hear this guy talking and there's laughing coming from behind the black curtain. So I open it up and I see this young looking guy who's like tall, beautiful, but he is in a wheelchair. He has a story to tell. And he's telling, cause I'm like, I, I waited for him to get done. The room emptied and I went in and I said, what's your story? He's like, what's your story? And I'm like, Columbine happened and we need to show these kids, we can bring hope to them. And if they hear your story, that you had a full ride scholarship to go play football and you're celebrating with your brother the night before and you dive in the ocean and wake up on your 18th birthday as a quadriplegic, they're going to listen to you. Mm -hmm. And they can understand that that's worse than not anything worse, but they can understand that he went through something and he's okay. So I'm going to be okay. So Ron Hickey and I, I called him up uh, 10 years we did that and then i just called him up about two years ago and i said hey the lord put it on my heart to do students succeeding so we have students succeeding.com and anybody can go to it if they feel, know someone who would like to i wrote a book and it's my world travels and the first lesson is why not you and it was a yeah. picture that i took in uh, costa rica and they were on a dinner cruise, went to get this beautiful alligator, uh, just the green, the blue, the yellow. And just as I went to take it, he went like this. And here's this little bit of mud on him, right? Mud on his, don't yeah. we all get mud on our face? Mm -hmm. So that's the first lesson. I did whatever the Lord told me to do. I picked whatever, I've millions of pictures from around the world. And whatever picture came to me and he told me to use, I used it. And so we're going into schools and we're letting them know there's hope out there. You can, you know, think about what you want to do now. Don't look at your circumstances. Look out into what you can do for people. Because again, my, like my dad, mom, everybody around me would say, take your eyes off yourself and help somebody else. And mm -hmm. then because of what I had in hospice, I realize by doing this and getting families around the dinner table again, I can help them because I've heard and I continue to hear the people in hospice and their regrets. So we can help them create less regrets. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And I think, you know, for somebody like you who has had, uh, you know, certainly there's a pattern here. I can see that you're, you know, very, um, very much taken on board that I'm not going to focus on myself. I'm going to focus on other people. And through doing that and having the experiences with the hospice and Columbine, but then also, you know, kind of linking that in with your profession too, as being a um, an event planner and all of those things coming together for you then to be going, well, actually, what is it that really lights me up? What is 
is it that I need to be doing? Because the experiences that I've had now tell me that I want to move forward with my life with no regrets. And I think that's a, that's a message that I'm definitely hearing from you. And it, would that be the same message that you would give to everybody else? Well, yes, but in a different way. My message is let's gather around the dinner table. Mm -hmm. And then I even have a little book for the people who are going to do it so that they can take little notes. Like I had nannies, 12 nannies from Sweden. I took my boys on a lot of the trips, but I couldn't always, right? So I'd come around the corner sometimes. It's not always going to be beautiful. My boys had their fire truck and they, I don't know where they got the Barbie, but they have a Barbie there and they're shooting at her on the toy truck mm. that's coming towards them. <laughs> Where's the nanny? <laughs> So the bottom line is this, is we sat around the dinner table and talked about why they shouldn't be shooting at Barbie on a truck. <laughs> I don't know what um, you're going to talk about because it's going to be something different all the time. It's going to be serious. It's going to be funny. It's going to be something about sports. It's going to be something about, we talk to people. I have, um, if you go to studentsucceeding.com, uh, you'll see the people who have surrounded themselves are incredible professionals and very well known. And they got on board with me because when you choose to, my main message is gather around the dinner table, create the lifetime memories. Don't just go off and eat here and eat here, gather around that table again. And then I think that after, you're, after you're done, write a little couple notes. What day did happened and what was what happened? I started doing that then. I'm grateful now. And so if it makes me know that I'm going to have less regrets when I died because I took the time to sit around the table. And when my children left, I have those memories now. And so do they. And we incorporated a game night. And they loved yeah. it. You know, I want to bring families around the dinner table so when they're older, their kids are gone and we all find ourselves there at the end of life, we can have less regrets. Well, thank you so much for that. I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, in my household, that is we that is just what we do. It's around the dinner table for those exact same reasons. So I echo everything that you're saying. So in, in terms of, um, you know, that message that you want to share with everybody, you know, bringing people together, share those memories, make memories together so that when the time comes, you you can move out of this earth with no regrets and uh, you've lived the best life you possibly can. So I want to say thank you so much for being here today, Susie. For those of you who are tuning in for the very first time, uh, let me tell you a little bit about the She Myth Elim Eliminator stories. So every Tuesdays and Fridays, I'll have a guest on the She Myth Eliminator and they'll be telling their story of maybe it's something that they've done that like Susie today. So she's had some experiences in her life and she's had some learnings that she's now sharing with, uh, with other women to help them to stand up, stand firm and stand out with whatever it is that they're doing, whether it's in business or whether it's with their family or with their life. And, and Susie's story today was very much about that, very much about you, very much about your family and the wider community. So thank you very much for sharing that. Uh, I'm going to see you guys back again next Tuesday for another episode of the uh, Eliminator Story with another amazing woman. We'll also be talking about adversity, some, uh, you know, maybe some challenges that women have, have had to face and how they've overcome that adversity. What are they doing to create thriveability and success in all areas of their life? And if you haven't already done so, you want to go and get yourself a copy of the book. And somebody, I usually have it on my desk, but uh, somebody has been to my desk and they've picked it up. I had a client here and we've got it down in the other in the office the other office today but it's at the bottom here so the Shemith book as Susie said she's read it um it's yep. a fantastic book fantastic Even if I do so so myself um and you can get it at amazon.com or amazon.com.au if you're in, in Australia so go get yourself a copy of that and right now because we're celebrate have been celebrating all week International Women's Day go and uh, get yourself an ebook copy so if you want a copy and you don't want the hard uh, the hardcover or, or a paperback copy you can get the uh, the ebook version for just 99 cents yes it. It, will, it will help change your life right Susie Yes. And I want to say something very quickly. When I first started out in business, uh, when I left home, my mom said, travel the world a little bit. When you settle down, you'll be satiated. 
And I think it's because she had six kids and never, you know, we went someplace for summer, but not somewhere all the time. And I want to tell you that I, my dad was amazing to share with me, like, daddy, how much do I need to make? Well, you have to save some, spend some, tie some daughter. So make sure you fit 30% into whatever you're doing and be around people who are just have those type of knowledge, just the understanding of what's going on, but ask, never be afraid to ask. I went knocking on doors because my dad said, knock on doors. I had to get clients somehow. And it turns out that uh, Paul Allison, his dad started all the Dairy Queens in Denver. He gave me the whole account and he let me sit around his round table. So be looking for other people that can help you. If you don't know what you're doing yet, grab onto somebody and be mentored by them. And don't be afraid to say, cause I even said to him, are you mentoring me? And he said, would you like for me to? And I said, ah, why wouldn't I? And so mm -hmm. do not be afraid to ask, step out there and be that girl you, you're, you are. Fantastic. And that's a, that's another great piece of advice. Thank you, Susie. Getting some assistance from people that have been there before you. That is the fast track to uh, to success. So I want to say to everybody, thank you very much for joining us on the episode of the She Myth Eliminator this morning. We'll be back again uh, with another episode next Tuesday morning with another amazing guest. Until then, have a fantastic weekend and I look forward to seeing you guys again next week. Bye for now.